welcome. Welcome to the Mind and Muse Crochet and Fiber Podcast. I am your host, Caroline, and I've, there's been a short hiatus, but usually I'm around here every two weeks to share with you the crafty side of my life. And by the crafty side of my life, I mean those projects that I begin that have to do with some form of form of hand crafting. It might be crochet, it could be knitting, it could be needle felting. It hasn't been sewing in a long time, but there have been some sewing projects. And whatever satisfies that crafty desire that I have. If you've been around here for a while, you'll know that I am a part-time mathematics professor at the time being, at the current state of my life. And I live on the island of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean with my husband. And, well, that's me. What can I say? What else can I say? That's me. So, as I was saying, there has been a hiatus. I've been uh, away for a while because, as I mentioned in the last episode, my father-in-law, my father-in-law's health had turned for the worst and so in between hospital stays and taking care of him at home we kind of like knew that things were not going to last that way for a long time and so he finally passed away um today is sunday so that would be two saturdays ago mm -hmm. And, um, well, you know, we've kind of been dealing with all that in, in a calm sense because my husband ded dedicated a lot of time the last couple of years to taking care of both of his parents, but in particular his father as his father's health began declining. And so he, he, had, he had little remorse for his attentions during the final stages of his father's illness. And um, that kind of like made it a little easier for him to accept the fact that his father was really suffering a lot. And he even, I know, began to think it might have been for the best in the long run. So there's that. We've been dealing with that. And in between dealing with that and dealing with the semester at work that is um, advancing and as semesters advance, well, the work gets more. And also having my COVID vaccine, I, w I took the Pfizer vaccine. I would say it was now about a week and a half ago. And um, I am thankful for the fact that I have got that first doses out of the way and that there were no ill side effects. I mean, besides a little um, discomfort in the arm, as can be expected from any vaccine. If you've ever received any vaccine in your life, you'll know that that can be expected. If you ever gave vaccines to your children, you know that can be expected. So it's it's um it's all fine. It's all. It's all fine, and I have. Um, we're now waiting for my husband's turn, which will take maybe a little bit longer because he is in the next group up. But um, there, I think groups are moving up here about every two or so weeks as um, they complete the second doses of some of the Pfizer vaccine, or every three weeks as they complete the doses of the Moderna, which is also being given on the island. So it's an ongoing process right now. The only thing I would criticize about it is the communication. It's kind of hard to know who they're accepting for vaccines um, because there's a, it, it kind of like rum, runs by way of mouth instead of by any type of public communication system, which I probably would be the best. And so we don't have... We do have a setup of appointments, but they are not at the stage where you're actually called in for your appointment. You kind of like have to remember yourself. 
and there are occasions when they're just the the vaccination center will have so many vaccines that they need to begin calling in other people that are out of the stage because they have no more appointments and they've got a lot of vaccine left over. So that has been happening also. And that was my husband's hope, but he didn't, he didn't make it in time to the vaccination center when he went. They had already used up all the vaccines. So we're still waiting for that because we believe that once we are both vaccinated and we've waited that two week period that we will have the opportunity to maybe to begin traveling to see our children in the States. We'll see what happens. Uh, we're taking it one day at a time. Okay, sharing with you as I normally do, I divide this episodes, these episodes that I record into several stages. One of the stages is the Walking the Talk where I share with you projects that have been made or recently or sometime at the past, either made by me or given to me, and how I use them. And so I'm sharing with you two projects today. I have the blouse that if you've been here for a while, you will remember that this is a blouse that my daughter Clarissa Smith made for me. This is her pattern and it is called Las Nubes and it has um, techniques such as in a reverse wrangling at the top and at the bottom it has a pineapple stitch, a large pineapple stitch border kind of ending it. Um, it is made using the extended crochet and extended single crochet stitch all the way up all the way up and through so it's it's not a difficult stitch to learn the pattern is on her blog as normal and you can also get a, a non a, a version without advertisements if you purchase it for a small price on etsy so there we have i know you can't see the whole thing here because but because you have seen it in the past um We'll just leave it at that. And if, if you would like, I will include a small, one of those small photo or video sessions where I just share the whole thing in case you are new here and haven't seen it before. I think, but you can look on Clarissa Beth's notes on her blog and for sure she will tell you there the yarn that she used. I really do love the way the combination of colors. I love combinations of purple and blues. It is kind of like one of my favorites. This does have a, like a pooling scheme going on, but it doesn't bother me a bit. And there are not many occasions where I can wear it on the island because even though it's a very breezy top because of the pineapple stitch border at the bottom, and it's very lightweight also. The fabric is very lightweight and soft. So, but still in the tropics, any type of fabric that has a certain percentage of wool in it is going to become uncomfortable if the day is too hot. Luckily, this morning is is um, quite a breezy morning, and so, yes, I am able to wear it and share it with you once again. I'm sharing it along with a pair of earrings that I made these past weeks that we haven't seen each other. And they are a pleasure to share with you basically because they were i made them following a video on youtube that was in russian if any of you have ever tried doing a video tutorial in any language it takes a long time there are a lot it's it's kind of like done in little bits and while you crochet the, the sections that you think will be most troublesome or most difficult or more, most challenging um, you have to keep on moving in your project to complete it by the time the video is ended. So this is not something that can always be done in a couple of hours. It has to be done over a time period while you make whatever it is and continue to share it with, with your viewers. It's, it's very time consuming and I'm very grateful for everybody who puts videos out there because I have learned a lot from all the videos that I have watched. In particular, in particular, this video that I watched, I was able to watch it and follow it because it is crochet and she talks very slowly, although I don't even speak a word 
I don't speak a word of Russian. But if you, if you listen, because usually you have to stop, go back, watch again, stop, go back, watch again. And in that, you hear the same words over and over again. For example, I could tell when she was counting. And so I was able to watch what she was doing, pause the video and count on the screen to see the amounts of stitches. I think, I think I got it pretty well. The reason that this particular pattern called my attention, and I'll show you, I did it also in a larger version first. I worked it up with a much thicker yarn. This one is in Aunt Lydia's. No, it's not Aunt Lydia's. It's Omega. It's Omega um, Crochet. It's Omega Cotton Thread. And I believe Omega goes by three, uh, mm, ten, five, three, and it goes up like that. And so this is a five. It's not, it's not yet fingering weight. It's not as thin a thread as the number 10. So it's somewhere in the middle. I'd probably compare it to lace that I have used before, but 100% cotton. So it's nice and stiff. It's the good part about it is they're nice and stiff without having to use a solution of water and glue and without having to spray them with hairspray that I, I really hate because I don't think that smell ever goes away. And when the smell does, it goes away by that time, the fabric is back to being flimsy. So yes, it was a very nice make for that. And for the reason is that I also liked it is because this is actually Tunisian crochet, but Tunisian crochet with a standard boys hook. So it has to kind of like be boys because they're very thin hooks and they have to have that long shaft, that long um, hand, well, not the handle, the handle's at the bottom. Yeah, I think it is called like maybe the shaft. It has to be long, that the throat, maybe you want to call it. I don't know. It has to be long because you're going to be going in and picking up stitches as you do in Tunisian crochet. Um, the front forward pass, you move into each stitch that is there, that was made previously, pick up a, a loop, pick up a loop until you reach the end. And when you reach the end, and then your backward pass is coming back through two at a time. And so that's what's done here. But it's done such a way that in addition to going back and forth, you are decreasing so that each time these lines here get smaller. And finally, there's a crab stitch. Well, on one side, there's single crochet, all there's single crochet all the way around, and then there's a crab stitch back. So it gives it a nice edging. You know that I am a, a very a fan of crab stitching for edging, so I really liked it a lot. So I made it in the larger version to make sure that I was understanding what she was doing and that it was going to look okay. And then I made these two in the smaller thread, in the smaller thread. Um, I was thinking about, but I wanted to get used to the stitch. I was thinking about as I come to reach these edges here, I was thinking about adding beads. So there might be an update to a new version of them. This one, I, I just made them and put them on some ear wires that I had. But there might be an updated version where you could actually put beads all around the edge. And you could also put a couple of beads here before creating that um, a section of beads before you actually hang your wire. So I think it's got a lot of potential. One thing that I would have liked is I would like to be able to make this one going this way and this one facing this way so that to me they would be facing the same way but as it is since there is um there is a recognizable front and back well if you want both of the fronts going to the front they have to be that way but uh enjoyed that especially because it was um it was very nice to be able to use an old tool that you have anybody will have around the house to do a different type of actually a different form of crochet right like a combination between crochet and knitting is kind of like what Tunisian crochet turns out to be when you practice it so so there it is um I think it was a I'm not even sure now maybe it was a 1.8 1.5 boy hook because like I say it needs that long shaft and it was 
it was very nice. It was very nice. It was easy. Maybe in less than two hours, you've got both of them done so they could make nice gifts. I know that Mother's Day happens at different times around around the world, those that celebrate it. And so, um, yeah, um, graduation gift, a, a quick Mother's Day gift, or just a gift for a birthday. Somebody who likes big earrings, who likes light earrings because they don't want to use heavy earrings anymore. Um, yeah, it's, um, it was a nice make and I like it and I'd like to experiment with different types of yarn or threads to see how it comes out. So there's my walk in the talk this morning and I would, with today's nice cool morning, I would happily go out with this if I could <laughs> or wherever I could. We're not under, uh, that much of a, um, Restrictions, our restrictions have lightened up a lot. We're even allowed to have groupings or meetings, small meetings in homes. I think it's up to 10 people now. And um, I believe um, our governor is wanting to have everything back to as normal as possible by June in, in the hope that as people begin getting vaccinated, they don't go crazy taking off their mask because they believe they automatically, as soon as you get the vaccine put in, you are immune. And I, we all know if we listen to any of the um, health news that is being uh, given out constantly by the CDC or by other medical professionals that now have channels on YouTube, etc., newspapers, whatever you're reading, you have been told that you are not automatically immune. That after... Any of, the, any of the vaccines that are out, there is a wait period before you can consider yourself it considered safe to be exposed and without worrying about, you know. I guess for now it would be contaminating others, right? Because once your immune system has built up um, sufficient reaction, you... The hope is that you are protected, but... What we are not so sure of is can you carry or can you be a carrier even though you are vaccinated? And once there's more data out on that, then we'll be okay to take off our masks. So we're at that stage. And like, as you can see, the beauty salons are opening because I have taken off all that hair that was just going all over the place and becoming very, very untidy because of the fact that I am, my air hair is aging along with me. And so I've got a lot of, my hair has gone white in a lot of sections and it's very wiry. So it's kind of hard to control, kind of hard to control, especially since I'm not out going around looking for special products to help me. I'm just using whatever I find so that I don't have to be out on out of the house for so long. But anyway, that's where we're at right now. And those, let me see, what can I tackle first? Let me tackle first those, the project that has reached the end of the line and that you hadn't even seen on this channel before, although the idea comes from one of my viewers. One of the viewers mentioned to me on um, previous episodes when I was sharing with you these let me just step out for a minute. These little appliques, heart appliques that I have been um, creating. How do you think? Maybe I could put one there. Pretty. So I, I really like them a lot. But as I created these, somebody gave me the idea of why didn't I make, why didn't I make uh, book covers, a book cover and put this on the front. And I thought that is really a good idea. So I went about it. I went about deciding how I could make a book cover that would kind of like fold over and have like an envelope pocket at the front so that I could put my, this is my podcasting notebook, so I could put my podcasting no, notebook in it and then put one of the appliques at the front. And of course I had three appliques that I could have chosen from, but I didn't want to miss out on this one. Because, because I found it 
the cutest thing. I remember I showing sharing this with you on my last podcast. I found it the cutest thing because of the fact that it's a crab and my zodiac sign is Cancer. Though I don't, I don't, I can't really say I'm really into all that, but I do. I like the idea of a lot of things, and so the crab has always attracted me because it's my zodiac sign. So I made the crab using the same site that I shared with you before. Uh, yeah, it's using Golden Lucy, Golden Lucy Crafts.com, Golden Lucy Crafts.com. I remember sharing this with you before. And so it's another one of her appliques based on the heart shape. And then I didn't have these those white eyes, I don't know what they're called, the jiggly eyes, I didn't have them. So what I did was I made a flat piece of felting, just needle felted some white uh, batting until it made a little coin. And then I cut it a bit bigger than this button and I used buttons. So that's the applique I chose to put on front. The actual book cover was made this way, starting here and going side to side. I did 40 stitches across. Well, I actually did more. I probably did 42, 41. Well, whatever you need to end up with 40 stitches because these rows are alternations of double crochet in alternating the front and the back loop and then single crochet alternating the front and the back loop double crochet alternating the front and the back loop single crochet alternating the front and the back loop and that creates this very nice sort of like ribbing this ribbon that I like a lot and this yarn that I used here is oh did I forget to bring it out? Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Well, I did find what was left over. But I didn't find the ball band. I didn't find the ball band. So, do I have any idea? I know it's a Lion Brand yarn. And I know it's their version of sort of like a tweed. And I also know that it is a combination of acrylic with cotton. It's a lot more acrylic, like 70% acrylic and 30% cotton. It's called Tweety something. This was also the same yarn that I made a top, an orange, and a top with a blue border some time back. And um, I had a one ball of this one that I was, I really liked that color a lot. If I find the information, I will put it in the description box below this video in case you're interested. So basically what I did was I measured the book and I went, well, I chained until I got to this, this, the size of the notebook cover and then I added about five more stitches. Now this is a very stretchy stitch. I could put this cover on something else. Because the fact of the matter is that I did not make it for this one. I, I made it based on... I made it based on this notebook, which is the notebook that I use for designs, because my podcasting notebook is almost, is almost finished. And I was like, well, I don't want to make a cover for a notebook that I won't be using for much longer. So I actually made it based on this. But I find that it it fits the other notebook with a lot less stretch, a lot less, well, a lot more compact, you know. It's, it's like a perfect fit for that one. But it's so perfect that it's even a little bit loose. It's not bulky, but it is loose. But it will also fit this one. Because of the fact that it is so stretchy, this is... Um, a larger notebook by a couple of inches but it does fit that one too so so
So although I put it on the other one, it does fit this one. And I know this has the size at the back, which I should have looked at before. This is a 7.5 by 9.75 inch notebook. So it's bigger than the other one, but this is stretchy enough that it will fit this one too. It just, for this one, you just have to stretch more. So there it is. The, I don't know if I'll be putting a pattern up because I would have to, uh, I would have to make it again. So what I did was I made this very long rectangle. And starting from here, I measured from here all the way down and back here. So that's how long I made it. I did not, I did not measure it for you. So I can't tell you today, but I wanted to have it enough to fold over. Now you see why I prefer on the other one, because for this one, I think I would have needed to make the fold a bit longer because what happens is that I had to bring my this fabric as close to this as possible so that it would stretch over this part that is it's shorter it's lower and so I did I couldn't find a way so I brought it in as close to the inside border as possible and then I actually used here bigger stitches to reach the other side. So let's say I made my rectangle, I folded it over, and then starting at this corner, I went all the way around in single crochet on the outside, on the outside to here. And then when I got to the middle part here, I used half double crochets. Then I went back to single crochets to here. When I reached here, I crab stitched all the way back. And so you can see how it goes down there just a bit. And I did the same thing here. I did the same thing here. Single crochet all the way around till I got back here. And then crab stitch all the way back, except in this part here where I did half double crochets before I did the crab stitching. I mean, before I finished that side. So yes, if I would, could make it again, then I might make one for the other one using the appliques that I already have, and then I'll be able to maybe post it. If you think it would be useful, post it. I mean, you might have a, a special Bible, for example, that you would like to cover. I don't know that I would particularly cover this one because of the fact that I like the elephants that it has, but if you've got a, a Bible or a book that you read a lot, it, it would be possible that you could make a cover that will last longer. Now, this yarn has 150 grams. This is what I have left, which I would say is about 30 grams. I don't know, I haven't weighed it. But anyway, the thing is that you need more than 100 grams of this yarn, which is fingering. They, they give it a number three. Number three. I call it fingering. I think it's close enough to a a cord to um, be called that. So along the line of finished crafting projects, I can share with you a little bit of kitchen crafting, which I actually had a chance to do this week and a purpose because this week my husband and I celebrated our 32nd wedding anniversary. And along the years, I feel that we have given each other so much and in terms of things that you want as you grow older, well, I think it's natural that those things tend to be less. So I no longer gift my husband, but my husband is a, an, a, a very, he's very appreciative of um, sweets and cakes and delicacies of that matter, of the sweet nature. He has a very fine sweet tooth. So over the years, what I have tend to do is simply on any special occasion, I just say that I am gifting him a cake 
or some form of pastry and um, leave it at that. So this year, um, once again, for our wedding anniversary, I dedicated myself to making him a homemade baked cake. And I, I went this year with an Italian cream cake that nobody knows why it's called Italian. Well, it's actually an Italian coconut cream cake. And nobody really knows why it's called that because it actually isn't Italian. Most people say that it is more like a Southern recipe because of the fact that it's got a lot of fat and sugar in it but I usually I have tried several times in the past and when Clarissabeth was here she was the one that Clarissabeth my daughter was the one who presented to me this recipe for the first time at that time I was just beginning my advantage adventures with a gluten-free diet so we tried to make it gluten-free and we had quite a bit of success using a baking free flour uh, that is called EXO, by the company called EXO, and it is based on cassava flour and coconut flour. Um, it might have some other starches in there, but I really don't remember, but that's the basis of the blend. And so I have used that blend to make my favorite Hershey's chocolate cake, and it works very well. And we have used that cake to make this Italian coconut cream cake and it, is, it also works very well. This year I had to do gluten light because of the fact that when I went to reach for the EXO I can no longer find it on the island. I used to find it a lot in Marshalls and that was years back ever since it went scarce there. I did pick up several bags of it once when I went to the States um, and I brought several bags back with me and at one point or another, I did find a large bag at some store. I don't remember which one, but I still had uh, some left and it, went, it hadn't gone bad. So I used what was left of it, but I only had one and a half cups left. And the recipe that I used for the Italian uh, coconut cream cake is, or Italian cream coconut cake. I'm not sure of the order of the words right now, but I use, it needs two cups. So... I completed with an all-purpose flour that I had there and um, it also you also have to incorporate coconut flakes unsweetened coconut flakes sugar butter oil eggs and you try to get a lot of air into the batter by actually beating the egg whites and folding them in so it was a very nice cake. I used a shy spiced cream cheese frosting and covered with pecans and I have to say that I think it was it was pretty good. Well, that is one of the makes that I have to share with you for today. The other make that um, that is complete, one that isn't complete, which and then is my projects that are still I'm still pressing on with them, is a project that you also saw last time, which is a sock that I am making with this Heritage Cascade Heritage Yarns 150. So, and it's a, it doesn't have a color name. It does say color of 5698 if you're interested. I don't even know if you can get this anymore because I bought this really cheap. Um, I think it was on clearance because I bought two of them. Lord knows why. I thought I needed so much of it. I think it was just because it was on sale. But anyway, here is the sock that I've continued to work on at the moment. It is... I was trying to follow Hermione's everyday sock pattern, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And it has been made thousands, I think thousands of times, but I wanted to do it toe up. 
I wanted to do a toe up. I always make my top socks toe up. I have never made a toe down sock for knitting and I have only once out of the many, many times I made crochet socks, which was uh, recently, if you remember, those tipping the scale socks were uh, cuffed down. All my socks, I make them toe up because I like to try them on as I go. And I usually use Sockmetician's recipe for making toe up socks where you can make the foot in whatever pattern you want. Um, let's say needle one in whatever pattern you want. And then needle two is just a simple stock and um, yeah, knitting back and forth, knit stitch. And I am at the heel where I always do a German short row heel. This actual pattern uses suggests the eye of partridge heel, but I was looking at it and it was very similar to Sockmetician's version of the German short row heel. And since I know the German short row heel well enough, um, I looked at the, somebody had made the eye of partridge heel for toe up, but then the thicker part of the heel, because this uses a reforced heel, which means that at one point you're going to slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, and then the other side you purl all the way back, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, purl all the way back to do your heel flap. And so that gives you a, str a more strength in a part of the sock that is always rubbing against the back of your shoe, if you wear it with shoes. And so she... Flips, she flips the eye of partridge heel, and when she flips it, then the reinforced part of the heel is at the bottom, instead of being at the at the top. And I just thought it looked better this way. I just thought it looked better this way, and less learning because it was something I already knew. So there, the Harmonies Everyday socks is a pattern of uh, four, four row pattern and you can see if you have an observant eye where I went off my pattern here I think I did one because you you have a patterned row and then just a knit row a patterned row and then a knit row and I think I did two knit rows in a row here but okay there I'm at that I've got one more sock to make once I finish this, deciding whether I will leave it as a shorty and hoping that it will fit Clarissa with because the whole reason why I had to make another pair of socks, um, well, I didn't, I, I have the purpose of making more socks because I want to reduce my sock, my sock yarn stash, but in addition, the sock that I made for Christmas for Clarissa with did not fit. It was too tight. So... This yarn is what I would call a plumpy fingering weight. It's very thick. It's a very thick fingering. Well, not a very thick. It's just a thick fingering weight. And so I figured that if I used a thicker yarn, instead of using yarns that are more, that are giving you like 493 yards in 100 grams, this one gives you 300 and something. And so 350 something. So it's a plumper. And I figured that with my lace weight needles would make the sock bigger. I've tried it on, it's very comfortable on me, but I had also tried on the other one and it doesn't it didn't fit Clarissa but once it got to the heel. Once it got to the heel. Because I think the reinforced heel, since it has that slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, as you go back and forth, it, it is possible that you tighten your tension on those slips when you when you purl back, you slip them you purl them too tightly and that's what causes that that part of the keel to like pull in and well whatever the reason it was too tight and so uh i'm going to try and make her another pair until i get the right size yarn the right size needles the right amount of stitches and everything the right way for to continue making socks for her because she makes a pair of socks for me usually once or twice a year so I'm at that stage with this sock and very happy with it. The only other project that I would share with you would be my wall art design 
my Garita wall art design that um, look out. It's called the sentry box, the sentry box that are on the castles that I am trying to design. And I, I will share it with you just maybe to share it because that way I can say you had followed this whole journey with me because actually um, you'll be see very little progress because it takes so long for me to get through each row and there were was I, I really didn't keep up with the at least one row a day because of the fact that we we had different situations going on so I haven't advanced as much as I would have wanted to but such is life and so we should be showing what real crafting is about on this channel I believe so I'm going to share it with you right I'm going to go pick it up. This is once again La Garita, which is the sentry box, if you try and translate it, that I am making. I'm going to try if I can put it on here without shaking the camera too much. And so it is my own design. It's using C2C, corner to corner crochet, and I'm using a 3.25 millimeter hook. I have marked this as my front. And this is the only part of the color that you see coming up. This is the beginnings of the sentry box. And on the other corner, we have like the changes in the sky because the sky here is normally a blue, but sometimes brighter or darker. And so I tried to reflect that using a darker blue for some of the sky. And so next up here, there are about four or five more rows that I have to do before I am going to start creating here the an external wall of the sentry house, which was made in yellow, a golden yellow, because um, it, it was like based on a photo where the sun is shining. And so the actual gray of the sentry box turns, has tints of yellow in it. And so I tried to reflect that in um, the only way that I knew how, which was painting it yellow. So there's not a lot to see. Some changes here in the way, you know, the sky. You don't see a flat, straight sky usually when you look up. So that's why you see that the edge here is not is not a straight edge. This one is straight because it's still the side of the box. So at the moment, I believe I've got maybe, what, 13, 44, that is 57, and then 12, that will be 69 stitches. And when I get to 75, I will have reached the corner. And then it should move quicker because from there on back, it's all decreasing, but you're also dealing with more yarn management because I will have at most four colors at any point. And so at the moment, I am just working off the spools of yarn. I am working this up, as I have said with, to you before, using this um, yarn art jeans, which I like very much. It is a 60% uh, acrylic and 40% cotton. No, 55% cotton and a 45% acrylic. And I will have four colors. I bought this off Amazon because it's not always easy to get, but Amazon did me well. And so, you still have to kind of like imagine the fact that that is a um, <laughs> that is a garita. I'm not sure if I still have it open here, but I have shared it with you. Um, I think enough times for you to understand what it is that I am am trying to recreate. So this is what I am going to recreate. I actually wanted to try and redo this wall to give it a little bit a better perspective. I would have to check to see if I have what would happen if I change it. If I, if I already if I already have gone past the stage where I would have needed to add the yellow, then I'll just leave it like that. I mean, everybody knows that I'm not an artist. I'm not a painter, so it's fine. So the last section of this podcast normally is my on my radar where I try and share with you some 
ideas of future projects that I am thinking about uptaking. And I just wanted to share with you, in case you haven't seen it already, a pattern by Crochet Cakes. Mm. There we go. This is her This is her Eat Cake sweater. It is her the newest addition to her line of patterns. And it introduces the technique of modular crochet, which I believe as I have looked at it is a form and it's also in knitting, but it's a form of knitting or crochet in which you create your garment in pieces as you would when you're sewing, as you would when you are sewing with fabric and then you stitch the pieces together. And it is um, said to give a better fit and to give better drape and all that. So she introduces that form of modular crochet here. Here's a really cute tape. She calls it eat cake because of the fact that this yarn that she purchased that actually she is making this in collaboration in collaboration with a yarn company we crochet official they sent her the yarn and it's and she was so enticed by the fact that she believed that that looked actually looked like these the birthday cakes that have sprinkles on them. And so she decided to call her design Eat Cake Sweater. And there is actually a cow running at the moment. I think it's only on Instagram, but um, I think somebody is running it on Instagram and Clarissabeth is running it on Ravelry. And so you can go over to a Ravelry group and check out her threads if you're still using Ravelry and try to connect with other people that are going to try and make this. I, I have it on my radar, but I do not own any, I do not own any speckled. This is a, you know, crochet looks very nice in speckled, but it has to be a very um sparing speckled in the sense that you can't have too many speckles in one place or or tons of speckles together because then it pulls but this one this particular type of speckling where it's really sparse right it's it, it's 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 not all that together that clumped up the speckles looks really nice in crochet i do not have anything in speckled that is not wool and I really wouldn't want to make it on wool because I'm not going to use it because I think maybe I would do a short sleeve version and it's it's very loose and so I'm going to try something else maybe I'll instead of the speckling maybe I'll try um, color blocking technique because it's done in pieces it's very appropriate to have one piece done in one color another piece done in the other color and the same for the back and the sleeves and I think I have uh, thin yarns not lace weight but very thin fingering yarns like the kobasi yarn that I used for previous projects which is a combination if you don't know of cotton um, bamboo silk and um, it is very light. So I might try doing it in that because I do have a vast amount of that, a lot. Look, what happens is that I have it in dark colors since we're coming on to spring and I think I wouldn't like to do it in dark colors, but I'm gonna check out, see what I've got and see how I can join it. If not, ultimately I did find a, um, from Cascade Yarns, their fixation splash in the range of splash their fixation is a cotton elastic yarn that is speckled. And I really liked one that they call Seattle. So I'm thinking about it, but thinking because I'd have to buy, it only comes in 50 grams and this uses 300. So I'd have to buy mm, more than six of them, especially because that yarn is decay. 
So yeah, it, it would take also some tweak, some tweaking of the pattern to make it work and all that. But the, the ease of modular crochet is supposed to be the fact that you don't necessarily have to crochet with amounts of stitches, but you can crochet to certain lengths which are appropriate for your body. So um, if you have a very good swatch, you should be able to make the changes for those measurements. So hopefully that's what's going to happen on this channel soon. Um, I'm going to leave it at this for today because I've got my husband coming in to have breakfast after his bike run and I have to go make that said breakfast. So thank you for joining me today. I sincerely hope that this little time that we have spent together has helped you take your mind off of other, other things, has helped you achieve some sort of calmness and some moments of happiness and ease and peace and that you have enjoyed this podcast enough to hit the like button and to also hit the share button so maybe somebody else that you know needs a break from real life and would would like to share my creative intense with me so thank you for joining me and till we meet again Keep yourself safe, keep yourself happy, and keep crafting. Bye for now.